first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I'm hearing the debates uh, with a lot of interest, especially on, on AI. Uh, I wanted to share with you that I'm reading a lot of articles around how many jobs will be replaced by AI. And I keep asking my team whether the CEO job is up for replacement or not. Uh, so far, I am okay, they tell me. So far, yes, yes. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a hot topic, but I do agree that, uh, you know, AI is a tool. It's another tool that will come our way and will change the way we are uh, conducting business, making us more effective and efficient uh, going forward. Um, I wanted to, first of all, take a step back and uh, compare a little bit um, the digitalization process in Romania uh, with something which is uh, very dear to, to my personal interest, which is sports. Uh, I would say it feels like a marathon. Why it's a marathon? Because digitalization, especially if you run marathons, uh, you know, approximately on the 20th kilometer, you, f you feel that it's never going to end, you know. Uh, and it feels like this because uh, you feel that you're digitalizing, but then the next thing comes and you feel behind and then the next technology comes and so on and so forth. You know, AI is just one of the many things that we've seen over the last decade that emerged. Um, the problem uh, I see with Romania, and I benefit from having oversight of many European markets, at least through my company, uh, this is the, the fourth market in Europe that I am, uh, is that uh, it, it's an athlete with a lot of potential in the middle of the marathon, uh, but actually, you know, at the very last positions in the marathon. So we have a problem in our hands because we have an athlete which I believe is very fit and can actually win uh, this race, uh, but we're in the middle of the race and we are very far behind the leader. Uh, why is the athlete fit? Because we have human capital, great human capital, because money is never an issue. I think we have a lot more money than what we can absorb in terms of uh, digitalizing the, the public sector especially. Uh, and we have very decent infrastructure in the country. I'm not talking about the roads, of course. I'm talking about uh, connectivity infrastructure. Uh, but why is that athlete in the last position? Uh, because I think we're missing a strategy and a vision, clarity around what we want to do, uh, which then translates into, I would say, uh, openly, uh, poor legislation and regulation, uh, which prevents us from, from reaching our potential. And I'll give you an example. Uh, we are, uh, as Vodafone, we are uh, reinvesting in our shops uh, over the next two years to modernize them. To, we call it uh, uh, tech retailer, to become the retailer of the future. Uh, and my team comes to me and they say, uh, we need printers in the shop. And I say, why do we need paper in the shop? This is 2023. You know, we're, we're designing the shop of the future here. No, 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 no. The regulation says that you still have to print contracts and get customers to sign it. This is 2023. If I walk in a store in anywhere else in Western Europe, I could uh, sign up my contract, that will arrive over email, we are electronic signature and wouldn't have an issue. So, you know, this is what uh, kills me a little bit because on the one hand, I really think that the athlete is very fit, uh, but I think that we are in the very last position. So we need to run this marathon at sprint pace going forward in order for us to catch up and be ahead of everyone. The good news is that we can do it, I believe, uh, but there's a lot of work to be done. So. As a representative of AMCHAM, uh, first of all, I wanted to, to start by saying that, you know, as AMCHAM, we've always uh, advocated uh, elevating digital transformation at the heart of the, of the debate and put it at the forefront of the government agenda. Uh, we advocated also to develop a coherent and, and robust strategy uh, targeting all levels of the economy. And we've always uh, advocated and said that this is a multi-stakeholder partnership, so we need this is an ecosystem where, you know, government meets private sector and they come together and they create basically the next uh, era of digitalization. Uh, I'm very privileged to be uh, uh, chairing the Digital Economy Committee uh, at AMCHAM. Uh, and I can tell you that this committee is where all the big tech names uh, meet, which are all uh, AMCHAM members, but also the startups, the, the, the small companies that are emerging, let's say, uh, in Romania. And we talk a lot about policy, strategy and uh, developments. Uh, we have very high on our agenda, uh, things such as cloud infrastructure, cyber security, digitalization of public services, um, build up of uh, digital skills, digital education, uh, and any form of digitalization across any sector. This is very high on our agenda. 
Uh, in the last year, we have achieved uh, very critical milestones, I would say, through the creation of a legal framework for inter interoperability and cloud infrastructure uh, to host the future uh, digital landscape of the country. So we've, we're making steps forward. Uh, and I will stay a little bit on, on the cloud. Uh, we are very, um, uh, we advocate and we're very happy uh, on the approach taken and we really advocate uh, a hybrid cloud model. Uh, we also expect to see the marketplace component uh, to be uh, embedded as soon as possible because for us this is the gateway for uh, the public sector to access top-of-the-line uh, solutions as well as for the industry, the private sector, to invest a lot behind uh, the, this significant project. Uh, the next natural step for us is uh, to embed a cloud-first and digital-first mindset across the, the public sector, going back to my point around clarity, around strategy and vision that we need. Uh, we have many reforms coming our way, uh, and PNRRA is basically the driving force behind those uh, reforms. Uh, for example, uh, we're really uh, looking forward to seeing the telemedicine uh, reform. Uh, I can tell you that uh, for every percentage penetration of telemedicine in the world, you have a, a, the equivalent percentage of cost reduction in terms of uh, healthcare costs. So we, we see this, it's happening elsewhere in the world, so we really believe it's, an, it's a big opportunity to transform a sector which at the moment, you know, it's not, I would say, where it needs to be for a country like Romania. Uh, and this is one of uh, many other sectors. The, uh, you know, uh, digital transformation of education uh, is another one. Uh, and last but not least, of course, uh, modernizing the, um, the tax regime uh, and the tax collection mechanisms, which uh, you know, I, I heard that uh, President Hayos is uh, um, optimistic that th there is not much tax evasion uh, in the country. Um, I hope that I hope and I don't hope to be honest that's true because I believe that by tackling tax evasion and digitalization will help a lot in this respect we can avoid going back to uh, you know measures such as you know VAT increase or uh, extraordinary taxes etc to compensate the tax deficit that we have today I I really believe and coming from a country that has gone through a very big crisis which has forced us to digitalize by force our tax collection uh, methods, let's say, and, and I've seen the results and how fast we can progress by embracing digitalization. I hope that uh, in the next uh, couple of years we will not need to revert back to the old increased VAT, extraordinary taxes, uh, tax on property, the other uh, tax measures that are being uh, uh, implemented. And they're implemented, why? Because we admit we're not effective enough to collect taxes, you know. So uh, I'm really looking forward uh, to working together. Uh, I like the concept of modernization and digitalization. I don't know which comes first. I hope it's uh, digitalization because I really feel that uh, this can help modernize the sector. Uh, so from this standpoint, uh, point, um, technology is both an engine for us uh, as well as an enabler towards a more efficient and, and resilient economy. The next level is a, a digital transformation that empowers uh, and there is, mo uh, there is where we most need uh, the whole uh, economy and society, uh, let's say, approach. Human capital development and digital literacy are pillars of a robust uh, uh, ecosystem uh, that puts citizens at the core of, the, of this journey. Uh, so, not least, let's not forget that the digital transition is a revolution in itself, as I mentioned before. Technology is evolving at exponential uh, pace. Uh, as I said, it's a marathon and it will continue to feel like a marathon. Uh, for us, the trick is to make the athlete uh, more fit and make the athlete better in order for, for the athlete to eventually win uh, in this race. I think I'm optimistic. I'm very optimistic around the potential we have, as I said, because the raw materials are there. Uh, it's a question of uh, governance. It's a question of strategy, and it's a question of uh, uh, public and private sector sitting together and working through uh, the issues. Uh, and in this respect, first of all, I, I'm really uh, glad that we have such a wide representation in this audience. Uh, and I look forward to working as a, uh, both as AmCham, but also as, uh, as Vodafone, to making sure, basically, that the potential uh, is reached. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, 
um, it's a it's a nice uh, view to see what's happening in other countries. Uh, before I give the floor to to the rest of the speakers and see if they have uh, questions, I have a um, personal question. My background being in advocacy, um, from my point of view, mulțumim. <laughs> From my point of view, I think uh, Romania at this uh, stage, uh, it is a good place to, to do advocacy. I mean, I think the political dissidents are a lot more open than they used to be. And I would like to get your feedback in other countries. How does it happen? Because, for example, if I want to meet a CEO of a large company in France, it's a lot more difficult, or to meet the prime minister or a member of the parliament, it's a lot more difficult than, than here in Romania and to, uh, for them to hear what you have to say. I would say it's... Um, so accessibility uh, in Romania is better, so people are willing to listen, and the uh, doors, are, I feel, are more open because I really believe that um, it's a little bit from the background of the country being a little bit more uh, of a recent, let's say, uh, EU member. Um, so the, the spirit is there, the access is there. Uh, the difference with other markets I've been in other countries is that um, decisions are faster implemented. So you may have more difficult, difficulty in accessing the decision makers, but actually once you access the decision makers, you get decisions faster. So if we can solve this issue, I think we will, uh, we will make good progress. Thank you. And we have a question from Mr. Pambukcian. Uh, thank you. This COVID issue emphasized that uh, teleworking can function in many, many areas. But immediately after the, the COVID ended, everybody started to say that teleworking, it's not working. This is something that happens in, in the real life, and we know that. How can we overcome this kind of mentality? Because the, the, the teleworking showed clearly that it was more work than in a normal situation, and that's the reality. We all worked more then uh, uh, in, in a, let's say, without uh, a virus uh, situation, uh, it was more efficient from the point of view of the costs. But meanwhile, people, it's not considering that to be a proper work. How can we overcome this? And it's not just in Romania, but in Romania it's very, very bold. How can we overcome this, uh, this uh, fact? I mean, I think we went from one extreme to the other extreme during COVID. Uh, so we went from, from fully physical collaboration to fully digital collaboration. Uh, and as everything in life, the, the right balance is basically the solution. Uh, and we see it also. We have a, a number of uh, colleagues that are working mostly remotely and a number of colleagues that are work, working mostly in the office. I think I, I, don't, um, I haven't met a culture where physical interaction was not important in conducting business. Uh, even the Northern Europeans, which are very well known as uh, being, you know, colder nations, let's say, where, you know, there is no emotion in the... In the yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, even those countries, uh, now what we see, especially, for example, in, the, in our UK business, in our German business, a lot of people feel the need to come back to the office. Why? Because physical, through physical interaction, you develop the connections you need to develop, you understand uh, people better, and therefore you're able to take decisions uh, ultimately faster. So our view is that the, f the, the, um, the future is hybrid, and it will continue to be hybrid. The balance between physical and, uh, uh, and digital uh, is out there for each company and each um, a nation, let's say, to, to figure out. Uh, so the future will be hybrid. Um, the, um, the challenge is to make sure that in a hybrid environment, we make sure that we minimize the need for unnecessary human interactions. Uh, and again, President Hayes mentioned the, the need to go to the tax office. Why do I need to go to the tax office? 
Why do we still need to go to the tax office? So this is, I think, the challenge that we have. How do we minimize unnecessary physical interaction so that any physical interaction is the meaningful, powerful, the one that uh, drives relationships and connections and push decision making? And you don't argue. <laughs> How can we achieve that? I would go back to uh, legislation and regulation. Again, I would tell you that uh, if we make sure that uh, the intervention, if you like, uh, the unnecessary interventions that require people to travel somewhere to do something which is a mundane bureaucratic task mm -hmm. are out of the way. This is a clear direction, yeah? This, this, this is a choice that we can make, you know? Uh, if we make that choice, that has implications, such as, for example, the introduction of electronic signature, which is a, a regulation that we're trying to advocate for years for it to become pervasive, yeah? Why are we not there yet, you know? So these are the types of things that we need to put in place in order for us to minimize the, those unnecessary interactions. <laughs>